Or in Tales Spring Edition, my name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven and Lothar and we bring to you this amazing Swiss tournament where people qualified with 32 people and this is already round four of Swiss. Most of the matches are finished, but we still have one more match to play. Gara versus Freaky. Guys, what do we know about them? I have no idea what you're talking about. I was busy winning back there, <laughs> so um, just let you Raven talk. I was going to say, you know like you can view the VODs on Twitch, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, can't get away with that one. Yeah. But no, um, two names pretty prominent in the scene. Uh, Free key part of SK. Um, had a lot of like top 16 uh, and a few top eight finishes uh, in some tournaments over the past year or so, but never quite you know gone further than that. I would say from uh, from all the tournaments I remember anyway. So definitely wanting to you know progress in this tournament mm -hmm. and really just push forward and definitely want to qualify today at least and then secure that spot for tomorrow and then move on from there. Absolutely. And um, Lothar, who do you think is favorite in this? Uh matchup overall. Is it Gara who won Bucharest before or? Usually I would say Gara, but he likes to mix it up with some different decks and then, you know, it goes a different <laughs> way than predicted. Uh, usually Gara really um, plays very well, but uh, his odd deck choices sometimes are biting his, him back, you know, because he, he chooses to play against the meta, but it's like a very hateful way which punishes the decks that he thinks that will be played the most, but then he meets something that he didn't predict it, and he's just being punished himself. But you know? he has a chance, like if he actually predicts correctly, he has a chance to, to counter the meta game, and then he has a chance to win the tournament. The game is already starting, so the first we're going to see a matchup, Warrior versus Druid, Freaky on Druid, Gar on the Warrior, which seems patron. Yeah, kind of interesting to see Gara's lineup in total, which is actually Warrior, Warlock, Druid. That's so the first time I see him playing uh, yeah, exactly, Warrior yeah. ever, I think. Well, when we saw that there were zero Hunters, I was like, Gara is here, <laughs> right? Like, you know, he is playing, because he's one of the guys who actually uh, likes to stick with Hunter and, yeah. uh, and do some fun things with that. And also, again, known as a Shaman player, and, and once more, you know, he's actually just brought the top three. So maybe he's just decided to, you know, stick to tried and tested and just hope you know his actual just sort of raw skill mm -hmm. can power through whilst using their you know what's deemed the best decks overall Absolutely. opening the game is dance Esperant. we'll see how that goes because there's no answer to it at least for now unless unless no <laughs> no not really uh by the way freaky is playing rogue so i, I want to see what kind of rogue is he playing and uh, he was playing a lot of rogue on ladder like he has a lot of top ladder finishes with Rogue specifically just plowing through uh, people and getting to those top tens easily. Yeah, and uh, and this match, the Patron Warrior versus the Druid, is definitely an interesting one where if the Patron Warrior can actually build up the Patrons onto the board, it becomes very, very difficult for the Druid to deal with. But the second the Patron don't hit, uh, second the Warrior doesn't hit the Patrons in time, then the Druid can just do, you know, what Druid does, just build up the board with a lot of mid-range minions and then just power through combo later. So it's not like Control Warrior where they can just build up so much health that they don't have to be as fearful of combo. It's much harder in Patron Warrior. So definitely an, an interesting one. And this Ghoul coming down, I kind of like, makes the uh, trade kind of awkward and even if the ghoul like eats wrath here that's a sort of a win for the patron warrior because wrath is one of those key cards that can just completely remove a full health patron off the board yeah this is a funky turn because on one hand you you might want to play innervate druid of the claw in town form but but on the other hand you will not be able to kill the ghoul when you if you do it and uh if you if you just keep the ghoul on board there is a possible acolyte of pain just coming down next it could be travel time you don't want to give your opponent more cards exactly so I don't blame him for actually playing different type of druid that you should be, right? Because yep. you usually just want to care about, you don't care about the opponent's minions, just go face, deal damage, play your minion and that's it. And then you can you, you can take back the initiative after playing the minions with Savage Raw, Swipes and Raps. But in this situation it was completely different and that was a good decision uh, by Fibriki. Yeah, this is going to be interesting as well because we're at the point now where the Frothing Berserker is really good against Druid on, on turn three because they don't normally have a good way of dealing with it. Uh, yeah, and I was going to say, I think it might actually force a, you know, a, a sort of bad innovate, I'll call it, because you you know, you actually float in one mana, but it's needed and that's actually going to mess up his curve just a little bit because what he probably wanted to do was just drop Shredder this turn, Druid of the Claw next turn, innovate, boom, turn after, which would have been really powerful. But again, this just respecting the Frothing Berserker there. And to be fair, uh, Freaky does still have a pretty good board. You know, it's still going to require Anson and going to pressure quite a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. There's but no easy way to deal with those minions. It's too 
um, two whirlwind effects or just attack with a weapon which still deals damage, right? So, what did you think about the potential there of actually frosting Berserker execute on the 4 2 and like reset that same turn again? Um, and see, you know, like, can you answer this Frothing Berserker the second time? Because he obviously didn't have Swipe, yeah. or he wouldn't have innovated out the Druid of the Claw, cause, you know, more than likely would have kept hold of that Innovate. So, really interesting. Lothar going to come down now just to lock out any uh, shenanigans on turn five. But without the Death Bite, you know, there's not going to be tons of patrons being yeah. spawned anyway. That Execute would probably work a bit better there, knowing that there is Lothab, and uh, because right now Gar can just passively play minions and just still keep taking damage. But on the other hand, if uh, Freak just uh, attacks, oh wow, there is a Silence as well available to him uh, for the future. But he's just racing Gar, just going for face and saying to Gar, hey, you either deal with my minions or you're dead and I still have Force of Nature, Savage or those cards. Yeah, and uh, the thing about this style of play, obviously it's worked because, you know, he's curving really well, you know, the patron hasn't got the weapons, which I think the Death Bite is just the single best card in this matchup for the Warrior. But what he's doing as well is like, does he have Savage Draw? Does he not have it? It doesn't matter. You've got to play around it if you can anyway. And and there's you know a certain aspect to Hearthstone where you can actually just fake out cards you've got in your hand uh, based on how you choose to play each turn. So Gara has um, a couple of options here. Uh, he will be able to Whirlwind Execute and Armor Smith. And I think you just start with Armor Smith and then run your 4-1 into the 4-3 to see what is going to drop. And then if there is uh, something nasty like a Taunt, you might still Whirlwind and Execute Lothab. If there is not, you might... Oh, is he going for a 4 free first? I, if he decides that he absolutely wants to trade the 4-1 into, into Lothab as well, then probably it doesn't matter which shredder he attacks first. Yeah. But I, I would like to see an attack with a 4-1. Oh. Oh, this means that there might actually be, be a whirlwind, but uh, he sucked first. Like, those animations take some time. And the rope is running away. Oh, and a 2-4 minion is being... But oh, look, two outcomes from <laughs> Paltishers are exactly identical. Interesting, yeah. But it really worked for Gar, and he was super fast with that APM, just uh, being able to actually <laughs> kill everything. <laughs> it is an important as aspect it's in uh, playing Hearthstone. Apparently, uh, well, we've seen Moody actually with, and not doing, being able to do everything. We That's saw Crane true. during uh, last weekend whiffing and not playing Dr. Boom when he had 7 mana and didn't do anything with that 7 mana. Well, last week I've seen Sixo actually having a lethal puzzle on board and not doing it as well because he didn't have enough time versus Dice. Oh, too bad. He had lethal <laughs> on board and didn't do it. <laughs> that uh, lack of APM. So these two minions are really strange as well because it's going to almost force each each player into hero power in each turn. Um, which isn't, it's probably better for the warrior than the druid because there's not always something you just want to poke as the druid instead to use the mana to the full effect. Whereas at this point, the warrior is definitely going to want to uh, armor up fully. All right, lore test. How is this card on the left called? Wait, which card on the left? Doctor Boom. The guy on the two, the two is one it guy. Argent Watchman. Yes. Yep. All right. <laughs> Don't really just know how I knew check, that. Just <laughs> check. Yeah. I've been doing my homework. Look, every time I cast with you nymphs, you always give me questions that I always fail on stream. So <laughs> I've been working on it. I did succeed this what? time. You you were as good as this swipe. <laughs> Unless Doctor Boom is better, but I I think I doubt it. Swipe is so mm. good overall. Is it too well. fun? Because I think like on thirty health. Like this, but this berserker can't just kill you, right? You know what I mean? Like it's not it, the old days. Yeah, <laughs> it can't just come out of nowhere. It can do a lot of damage and maybe kill Boom, mm -hmm. but then you're making him trade it into you and just makes your health total even safer. So I, I actually wouldn't mind Boom here, to be honest. My problem with berserker is that uh, if you do not kill berserker and just slam Doctor Boom, you enable a better battle rage. You give uh, Keeper for free, and then your opponent can just oh, attack into Keeper and uh, battle rage for two. And you want to keep an advantage as Druid at the moment, like... Warrior is at 19. That's not that much, but it's still a lot. And you need to play longer game anyway. And you don't want to give Patron many cards, for sure. Yeah, and the benefit now for uh, for Freaky is that Garrett doesn't have a lot of cards and he isn't drawing any anytime soon, which has pushed him into just Grom and Keller Minion. And then the second there's an answer to that, uh, you know, Garrett's game's probably over from this point. He does have like Acolyte Whirlwind, but you know, that's no going to be too much. Like, you would have to draw something incredible for that to pay off. And even now, Sylvanas, I mean, pretty good answer to Grom as Warrior doesn't normally have a good way to silence minions. Well, unless she actually takes the Acolyte of Pain instead. Oh man, this is so many cards now. So you can Acolyte Whirlwinds, then you get a card, then you Battle Rage for three cards, you spend six, you have still three more mana. Maybe you can get another small minion. 
and just kill Sylvanas on your terms. Let's see what's drawn. Firewax for the one draw off the Acolyte. Um, I think we just do see the battle rage. <laughs> there was no no real question there. And there's a death bite at last. Death bite being so deep in the deck against Druid is crazy. You, ha I think you have to kill Sylvanas here on your own terms. But on the other hand, if if he takes Grom, oh man, this is so tough. But then if you don't, the Grom will still attack. The Druid will for sure have a way to deal uh, to deal with the one two, and we know he has a way. So you have to kill Sylvanas in the, on your own terms for now. Unfortunate oh. for Gara, but he did make a correct play. So now does he just fire War Axe and face tank? It's the same. Like, this Gromit will attack the face for sure. So you might... Is there any reason not to, though? You, might, you might armor up. Like, it's still attacking, right? But yeah, the problem is you'll die the following turn regardless then. Because uh, the Druid's probably going to put on enough pressure on top of that Grom to, to, you know, to get really ahead. There's BGH from Freaky, but it's not going to do too much, uh, at least on this turn, especially because the Grom uh, dying there. So Dr. Boom Hero Power seems like a reasonable play when your opponent's on 7 health. Um, and even as a Savage Roll next turn. So if any of these Boom Bots do a reasonable sum of damage to face, even if Dr. Boom just gets sniped, then potentially just Savage Roll and uh, Hero Power can end this game. Well, so he still has two draw, po two potential draws from the Acolyte of Pain, right? So there might be an option to get a... Uh, slam an example into an execute and still kill both both of the bombs and maybe d just get one damage. So here's an option to survive, but it's it's a ongoing problem <laughs> against the druid that yeah. you are able to survive this turn, but you know, you just drop some minion. Yeah, and, th and the <laughs> problem is as well, I think like you can only really draw once from the acolyte because don't you like have to run into boom, right? Because you have no other way of proc no, no, execute. I if you if you want to win, you you would need to attack the bomb, get a slam get a double chance of getting a slam and the slam into execute or something like that, you know? Yeah, but that boom is, uh, the boom bot, sorry, is just going to hit into boom. Yeah, that's that's a whiff, though. Uh, he wanted to, like, the play was okay, but he wanted to activate the bombs and uh, the bomb maybe hitting Acolyte to draw one more card or um, be able to draw execute off the top and the bomb hitting bomb and bomb hitting uh, boom, right? So there was a couple of... Uh, well, there was an right? option that both boom bots would just kill the Dr. Boom, right? Is it just a matter of calculating the chances? What is better? Should I go for the double draw of the Acolyte? Maybe to get the chance to, you know, top deck or, or get two cards that can dig deeper for the yeah. Execute and the Activator for that? Or is it better to just go for the <laughs> rolling thunder from two Dr. Booms and four bombs, right? But I think, like, the latter was less yeah. optimistic. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a tough loss because uh, Patron... The warrior is one of the decks that can stop Druid in the last hero standing. So it might even be one of the counters that Gara brought. I don't know what his warlock is, if that's a zoo, but uh, losing Patron at this point and just having Druid to take oh, full control over the match is not something you want to Yeah, do. I think the problem as well is because this is last hero standing, Patron does pretty well against the rest of the lineup yep. as well. And it's just that's gone. Right. Like you've lost a matchup that is normally would I would say is favored against like the Patron versus the Druid. And now it's just gone. So um uh, Freaky's decks were, they were Rogue and Warlock, is that right? Yeah, uh, Rogue for sure, yeah. Warlock, yeah. Uh, Rogue and I think it was Warlock, yes. Yeah, so like, I mean, just losing out on Patreon is going to be pretty rough there, especially for the Warlock, um, if it's, say, Zoo, for example. But if it's a Reno Jackson Warlock or other type of control edge Warlock, then you're not really missing that so much, That's right? true, yeah. And Gara still has his own Druid and his own Warlock. So again, you know, looking at you know two two of the three probably most powerful classes. What's really interesting, both of these lineups is no Paladin. Yeah, well, uh, they did prepare for Paladin, right? With uh, Warrior, with Passable Zoo and Rogue. And uh, so recently in many tournaments, I've seen Paladin going 0-3. Like yep. even you start winning to 0 and then you just 0-3 with Paladin. But it was Conquest. And here it's uh, it's a bit different. Yeah, because so. if, if you lose with the Paladin, then it's gone, right? So yeah. you can only lose once. And um, I think that's interesting, though, because it's the way people choose to approach tournaments. Paladin pro being probably w like just as under Druid in terms of how popular the deck is. And um, and you can actually just build, especially in Conquest, because they have to win with it, you can build a lineup around it. Whereas mm -hmm. last year, standings very different in terms of the way you build your lineup. Absolutely. Yep. All right, so interesting situation. Like Even if Patron would win, then uh, Freaky still had Rogue as a, a possible counter. To, to Patron, but uh, we will see. The players are queuing the decks right now, and uh, Gara has to pick one of his remaining decks where Freaky just stays with the Druid. Yeah. Well, 
Let's see the outcome. Innervates and water groves needed. Yeah, I imagine if um, I imagine Gara might have locked in his warlock, uh, so probably going to be Zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, if it was me at least, I because this is last hero stand, you know, you against Druid, I would have just locked straight into the uh, into the warlock there to try and get the good matchup. But it looks like he's gone Druid instead, so he's gone for the Druid mirror. The Druid mirror is always tricky. How so? How so? <laughs> uh, how so? <laughs> it's a roulette. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I I I still think there is a lot of. Um, plays that you can make that are conscious plays that can uh, outplay your opponent. But yeah, 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 of course. Like we saw that in the previous mirror match with the Druids. Who was that? Uh, Moody versus Powder, Powder, Powder where yeah. Moody was able to come back from, even though he missed Wild Grows, uh, he was still able to come back from free health uh, on the back of very interesting plays. So you can never lose nerve in this matchup. There is still a chance uh, to come back even if you miss a Wild Grove. Yeah, this is kind of funny though, because both plays now, um, was it both have had Wild Growth? Or it, oh, both has yeah, 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 both Aspirin. Have. So um, yeah, both both wild growth, both aspirant in hand. So mm -hmm. even game, we have a fair druid game on yeah. our hands. Actually, I, what I would prefer to see is uh, both players not drawing those run cards and see how they struggle. Those are the most <laughs> wow. Those are you the just want to see games. them squirm. Yeah, on the one hand, yes, but on the <laughs> other hand, you know, those are the most interesting druid games where you actually have to play cards on curve like everybody else, <laughs> like so other mere mortals. You just w want to. Other people play to play 26 cards in the deck and have Innervate and Wild Growth in the last four. More or less, yeah. And then you can play any and you other can class. Wild Growth <laughs> into the Innervates <laughs> right yeah. at the end of the game. Um, so this is an interesting one. So the choice here is: Do you just play Shredder and sort of just roll with it and just you know hope he doesn't have you know as good an answer of you, or do you just play a lot safer, drop the Wrath, and then either Wild Growth or Living Roots? But the Wild Growth definitely more valuable. As you've both been matching each other ramp for ramp. You, you know, you want to continue with that and, and try and just beat out the other opponent. True. And you know the opponent didn't have the 4-drop, so there's a chance that he will be missing that turn, right? And then you have your 4-drop even. Regardless. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so really interesting to see Gara playing Druid again. Like, that was his deck for the first Dream of Ocarus, when nobody knew Gara at the time. Like, we've seen him in some qualifiers somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then he brought this uh, Taunt Druid that was called Gara Druid for so long. And he was able to to take the tournament with it. Yeah. There was like two Ancient of Wars, uh, every, every possible like taunt. Movement, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sun, there was one Sunwalker, like two Tazdingos. I mean, uh, sorry, Sengens. You know, ridiculous stuff. No one was back then. Almost no one was playing Ancient of Wars. Like the Druid was very aggro. -ish, Oriented. Yeah. Like mid-range aggro-ish, right? Like the usual way we see it right now. And uh, cause the the class didn't change. Much. People people actually played Hunter then. Remember those times when Hunter was actually <laughs> playable? Don't. I'm still upset. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know what's funny? Because the the first time we started playing Hearthstone in the early beta, Hunter was the worst class. Yeah, it was. It, it actually was, was completely the worst, class. the worst class. I was playing it exclusively, just Hunter control Hunter with traps and stuff, and playing Baron Geddon in it. Apparently, you still do <laughs> in the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nothing's changed. Yeah, nothing's changed, and. Uh, and then everything changed because it freeze mage was a thing hunter was the counter to it and then phase uh, hunter became a thing because of Anish the hounds and it was like well i guess hunter is a thing now yeah. and it stayed for many years <laughs> or months <laughs> well, so it was more than a year okay so it's a really interesting play last turn from gara he could have um he'd just seen a swipe and he had the option to do Pilot Shredder Living Roots um, to generate two 1-1s. One -one. Instead, he played the Belcher, um, which you know turned out working okay because they used the Living Roots to turn after as well versus, you know, versus the Druid of the Claw. But I don't know if, like, again, it's what we talked about before where if you just drop a Belcher on an empty board, especially versus Druid, it just doesn't feel that great versus yeah. Shredder and two 1-1s one after, straight after a swipe. So uh, that, that was an interesting one. We'll see how it actually pays off for him. Um, now he, he, he got an opportunity to kill Thorison, which is really important, but... Um, is this tempo BGH time as well? Yeah, I think Keeper of the Grove BGH is good here. Again, yeah. you've seen a swipe. Um, you know, y your opponent's going to need a Wrath, and then you still have minions left. So uh, I think this is actually really good. But is Gara going to save it, though? Well, oh, there okay. is the possible Dr. Boom coming. Like, you don't want to see Dr. Boom just being slammed in turn 7 for 6 mana. After yeah, that's just when you just slam Ancient of War in return and be like, yeah, my guy has more health. And he still has... No, you know what? Like, Dr. Boom is super tricky in this matchup, not only because it's Dr. Boom with the bombs, but yeah. because of Savage Roar. So, like, even you can't really ignore it. Like, most matchups, you can just really ignore the Boom and go face. But against Druid, you just can't. 
Like, yeah. what if there's double Savage Rush? Yeah, it's so much extra damage. This is kind of cool from Gyro. We see him, you know, doing uh, things slightly differently, I suppose, um, with the Savage Combatant, which I actually really like as a card. I think um, it, it had a tough break because Shred is a card yeah, instead. So um, I kind of like seeing play. You can get so much value from it because that hero power suddenly does three damage, which is pretty huge. Yeah, but then we have we have another trick for four mana and double Wrath, where one Wrath can draw a card and kill the one two, a second Wrath can just kill the five four, and then you can just attack with your uh, Ancient of Lore into a two four, and suddenly there is only one single Shredder, and you have a lot of cards, and your opponent has only two. Yeah, I like that play. It does use a uh, sort of you know the better removal in the Druid deck. But um, this is a pretty scary board, as you said. Like, imagine just combo next turn, or even just like Savage Roar or something like that. It's uh, definitely a lot of damage combined with the hero power. Would you consider uh, killing the Shredder instead of uh, Keeper? Uh, I don't think so. I think this is fine. I, I think I would like to draw a card, actually, instead. I like just to leave a single minion on the board that, that that can drop something on the board back, but you don't take advantage of it the same turn, right? If you would have killed the Palta Shredder, then your opponent still can use the new respawned minion the same yep. turn. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing as well, like that Shredder was always going into that Ancient of Law. That was, mm -hmm. you know, almost zero chance of him not making that trade. So why trade into a minion for your opponent when you know they're going to do it the following turn? I was only thinking because he killed the uh, Keeper of the Grove with Wrath and attack into the one two instead. It, what he could have done was just Wrath for two, the one two draw a card and then attack into the Keeper. But I guess probably he was playing around Wrath from the other side. That, that's why he yep. wanted to have Keeper uh, Ancient of Law. On yeah, on four. four. And Savage no. Well, you can't really even cycle here. That kind of sucks. You know what card I miss? Black Knight. Yeah. That'll be so good, it right? It should <laughs> make it back, right? <laughs> At some point. Potentially, At yeah. Some point. Two damage to the face, drop Belcher, and pass, because he didn't use the big game hunter like the perfect turn which was yeah the then right. why use it now why use it now yes exactly yeah now the, the chance of dr boom being in hand is even better and in fact dr boom is actually there yeah and also um because the, there was it's not like there was a reasonable board for him to have played dr boom last turn he had other stuff to do right so it's not like he missed out on that and now we do see the uh, ever loved combo in and hand. it's for eight mana so there's potential bigger output of the damage anyway right because you can also use your hero power yeah. but it doesn't change anything in this situation because the two and three damage is not clearing up any creature anyway it's always a combination of four and one or four and two well you can always clear board with it so it's still fine i guess yeah i think i like using combo here because um is he oh. not gonna savage roll oh, okay, okay. Interesting. yeah i think i would have just savage rolled as well um, just to do the most damage at the turn, and like you said, you clear the board, and when you clear the board against another druid, you got to be feeling pretty good the uh, when, you, when you hold a few minions on as well. Absolutely, but the thing is he has Dr. Boom still. Uh, he was able to almost clear the board, positioning himself really oh well with his Oh my minions. god, he placed two big game hunters and he didn't use one on turn 7? Yeah, that's kind of... especially versus druid. Yeah. Like, that's It's the only target, right? Unless he does the old uproot Ancient of War. Wow, that's interesting. Which happened when Adverable was playing it. Yep. He said it in that tournament, he did it like three or four times oh, wow. throughout the whole tournament, which is kind of crazy. Wow, that two big game hunters. I didn't see that for a long time. I remember that uh, when Handlock was still a thing, um, a lot of players were actually playing two big game hunters in a, in a, in a Druid, to in addition to a One Shade, an example. But I'm actually surprised, Lothar, that you are surprised. You just said it before the match started. This is Gara we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you said exactly that. Like, he is bringing those, a lot of hateful cards, as you mentioned. And this is exactly Gara style. Yeah, and I really like the attack with the shade there for, from Freaky. Like, I think, and, and this is something I know a lot of other players appreciate as well, but um, holding on to that shade, like, people do it too much. Like, they just try and yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like, no, I think you just attack, and, it, you know, your opponent still has to deal with it, and yeah. you're still presenting so much more damage, where I feel like a lot of players miss out on that. So this is a re really good play. Yeah, Ancient of War is going to come down, but... Finally, first big <laughs> hunter! Yeah! The damage is done. Seven damage to the dome for the boom's head. But uh, is that enough? It all depends. Wait, is it lethal? Uh, Savage Roar, you have... No, there's I no think force. you got to get through the taunt, right? Yeah, yeah, there is a taunt. There is no force. Yeah, no mind. So you definitely just see where these uh, bombs go, because hero power 
and um, and Living Roots might clear this up. That's awkward, actually, with that bomb. It's fine. This this three one will just hit the five seven for four, and it won't be a problem. I guess you need to go for it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> like, can you afford to just throw away the shade? Because you have three. You have like six damage total, so I guess that feels kind of bad. Well, um, yeah, w without using the shade. Yeah. yeah. What about just living roots into the five seven attack with a shade and then free one into the four two, and just play the BDH? Yeah, I guess yeah, <laughs> because there is like if the bomb misses, you cannot do anything. I guess oh, wow. this is the same like outcome. Bomb will go to face. Oh, four? No, it's actually worse. Okay, all right. So the shade somehow survived. But wasn't it better to attack with the bomb first. No, because uh, you have a bigger chance to actually hit the um, Ancient of War. And he wanted to hit Ancient of War with the bomb. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that makes uh, makes sense. But that was risky. He would still have to attack with the Shade into Ancient of War if the bomb would miss. And we're seeing the true power of Innovate late game in the Druid Mirror. Uh, where both players have it in hand and have actually zero use for it. But the Shred is actually a massive drop here for Freaky. Yeah, but honestly, you have to feel for Gar. Like, just get... He, he was playing from behind this uh, whole game, and now just getting innervated at the top. This is, game. This is the big Hunter Wars. <laughs> yep, it is. Azure Drake into Swipe, let's go. Oh my god. That would be pretty good. Everyone's a bit tense now as we see what what uh, the draw is. The of Lore is okay as well. Not bad. You can use a Swipe if you get it yeah. from the draw. And yeah. you have to draw, right? There's yes. like zero, zero, zero value of healing, like healing. whatsoever. Whoa! Oh my God. <laughs> this is Gara, this is standard, Gara. Gara, please! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Kalfuzad! Oh yeah! This is such a great Gara card. <laughs> so those BG, uh, big game hunters won't ever die. Well, you can actually snipe the big game hunter. He's still alive. though, you just wipe the shade. <laughs> but uh, he's still alive, though. For now, that's a wild growth. Oh. No. <laughs> okay, this is a mirror match for sure. And the Savage interesting Rose thing is that. Um, yep. yep. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing is this game's over. I just want to say that probably Freaky will just uh, attack the face, then Gara drops the Kaltuzad, trades, gets the minions back, and he just needs some form of stabilizing in, in, in yeah. with a taunt. Yeah. With a second engine of Lord to heal himself, and maybe, maybe there was a small chance of actually making a comeback, right? But uh, double, like the inner draw that he had was clunky as hell. He just skipped one draw basically, and that's a huge deal when you're playing a mirror match and you basically depend on that top deck the most. Um, so it, it was less impactful for Powder, uh, sorry, for, for Freaky to uh, get the, his own Innervate because he still had cards on the board and in his hand. So the yeah. Innervate was kind of like, yeah, who cares? But I still have what, whatever to play. Absolutely, but now Gara is down to his Warlock deck and I have to say this should not be a Zoo deck because uh, if he didn't queue a Zoo versus Druid and he just let his decks die, like you would not go into Druid versus Druid coin flip match or maybe you you do be because his deck was actually a bit different. Double Big Game Hunter, Savage Combatant, Kelthuzad. Yeah, it's a tough well. one though because I just don't think it was teched enough or like styled enough to be able to be better than Zoo yeah. versus yeah. versus Drew. And the, it's last year of standing. If you play Zoo, win. Guess what? You get to play Zoo again, and it's a pretty good deck. We saw that from Tice earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would. It has I to would be, be very. I would be very surprised if. It, um, if if it was Zoo, I'd, it has I'd to be, be Reno Lock, right? Or like uh, a Demon Handlock at least, because Demon Handlock sometimes it's still viable. Like people bring it to the tournament. Could but be anything with Gara, to be fair. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Dreadsteed. Maligos. Dreadsteed. Dreadsteed deck. Yeah. Is that it? Does is, is that Gara style? That's my call. Greedy. Is that greedy enough? <laughs> Lothar, what do you think? Red. Which warlock <laughs> is this? Well, it has to have Baron Rivender alongside that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that for sure. That. <laughs> <laughs> we see an egg, but this definitely looks like a zoo opener. Um, yeah, like why would you not kill Zoo into Druid? Well, he had two big game hunters right against that one Doctor Boom, so there's a huge chance <laughs> to kill it. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. To be honest, I'm, I'm I'm really surprised that if that's Zoo, why didn't Gara just bring it? I mean, Zoo. The only way. Uh, okay, I'm kind of exaggerating, but the 
most common way of Zoo losing against a Druid is either an Innervate Keeper, and if that doesn't happen, yeah. then it's double swipe. Well, yeah. basically Innervate into something, right? Innervate Keeper, Innervate Pilot to Shredder. Not really, because Innervate Druid of a Clone example is just being crushed by a 2 attack minion with PO. And Shredder like mostly. Yeah, shred I do agree. Root of the claw, especially if there's PO, no e really. Even with Shredder, you see something like an egg or a, uh, you know, a token from a creep and then abusive sergeant, you know, and then the trades become so so much easier. Um, so yeah, really surprised. But we'll see if he can uh, do some work with his zoo and reverse all kill Freaky. But when Freaky's got his own warlock, which we're not sure of yet, and Rogue as well, you know, Freaky's gonna be feeling. Pretty happy about this set so far. Absolutely, and Freaky has a good opening as well with that Wild Growth. Uh, he has the follow-up of that Shredder. Uh, actually, Wrath on the next turn, then Shredder into uh, Druid of the Claw and Swipe for a possible implosion. Gara, on the other hand... Missed turn one. He missed turn one. Huge. But still, this is not a bad hand against the Druid. No, the hand's okay. It's just I definitely think you want Light Flame in turn one. Uh, just to really get it going. And you need to just pressure the Druid constantly. So they need to use mana on like awkward removal as opposed to just chain dropping big minions. Yeah. Also, this in gangbos doesn't look good versus a possible shredder. It doesn't. That's true. But there's the direwolf alpha who can push it to the limits. Just take it further beyond. Yeah. Exactly. Good positioning of direwolf alpha for possible token. Mm, will be the same. <laughs> Just in case, yeah. like if if Im Gangbo survives somehow. Ooh, that's a good keeper. That's an awesome keeper. But now there's a there's there's a question. Do you silence the egg? Yeah, you can uh, then silence. Then hero power, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. So innovate this turn will be going down. Uh, he goes for yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. So even though he floats one mana, that's uh, protecting him from uh, the power of roaming. And also, Keeper of the Grove could buffed. It's a free four now. My god, it's this is how standard <laughs> would look. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah, so uh, what's good about this as well for uh, for Freaky is that in this matchup, you find that uh, Force of Nature is actually used to clear more, more than anything else. You don't you don't have to wait for the, for the combo and, and do anything like that fancy uh, versus Zoo. You just have to keep the board empty because it's Zoo's yeah. only win condition. So Force of Nature coming out in the next turn or so wouldn't surprise me too much um, as the Keeper of the Grove there is just used to just clear off the token because even though it's silenced, things like Power of Alarm and an Abusive uh, Sergeant still work versus it and can really uh, push some extra damage. Yeah, and it's sometimes be so great, um, especially if you have like a knife juggler, Darwolf Alpha, and some other minion with two health. You just uh, spend one card for three cards, basically. Ooh, nice well, that's nice an awesome seven. draw, right? It's turn seven. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think there's the six because low sub six two. I think it's just too good not to kill off, right? But yeah. you could have trade with the with the keeper in anyway, right? Well, with yeah, this, I think you, you just prefer board. an empty board versus a absolutely, yeah. Oh, look at this. So both players got actually Dr. 7 on 7. Interesting. Big I don't know. It's just, I'm just a favor of playing Dr. Bomb on 7 when you can. Even when you're kind of behind the board. But you, he well, you have cleared one minion, but then you bomb. Yeah, you, you rely the snap back, don't you, from, exactly. from Dr. Boom exactly. to just pull the board back the following turn when things trade. So If I can uh, actually uh, direct your attention to one card that Gora is playing that's not maybe standard in the deck. Oh, you mean the Peddler? <laughs> <laughs> no, the power of overwhelming. Oh, no, oh man. obviously. Obviously, <laughs> yes. I feel dwarfed. I feel like Gara likes Big Game Hunter as a card. Do you think he's playing double in Zoo as well? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Probably not, but it wouldn't surprise me. Well, he predicted a molten giant heavy meta. Oh, look at this. There's a giant. Well, that's the thing as well. If, if you predicted a lot of Zoo, then BGH can actually just win you the mirror because a lot of the time when you play Zoo and they're playing against Sea Giants, whoever gets the Sea Giant down first, it's such a big problem because Zoo can't just deal with it. They need like double PO or PO abusive and, and minions to throw in, whereas just like BGH and then just move on. Like, it's actually really big. Honestly, Raven, when I'm thinking about the best possible target in the current meta game for Big Game Hunter, that would be Mr. Challenger. I'm like thinking, I'm playing versus Paladins a lot and Mr. Challenger happens to have more than seven attack when, it's get, uh, when it gets hit by Avenge. Yep. So uh, there is a lot of targets in the meta game, and apparently it worked for Gara before. Uh, right now he's what a two-one. This is the fourth round of Swiss. I think they both are two-one. Um, I yeah, guess I'm not so. Sure. Yes, Gara lost one match, so yep. that 
Fricky has to be two on. Yeah, Fricky the same. Like he, he surely lost versus one shaman. Zero free versus shaman. Now we'll see the laws of nature have ultimate value because it even with the bomb. Oh, hey, actually that's a good. Yeah, yeah that's good absolutely order. good. Oh, that's <laughs> Miss. unlucky. But the still, one target <laughs> you didn't want to hit. Like you even wanted to hit for one because then you can finish it off with yep. the shape shift. Yep, unlucky. This is still a good position though for uh, for Freaky as he has you know like it starts to to hit the point now where our other wallet can tap. Um, his singular oh. minions are so much more value. It'd be four with Fury Giant, oh Raven. <laughs> It'd be four. I, I'm really not a fan of this, but uh, I, I appreciate the, the <laughs> deck building. <laughs> I, I don't like it, but whenever Wind Fury comes down on 8 8, you know, I, I can get behind that kind of uh, tech. I Would like those, though, that he played the Taunt minion and the Lotus, uh, like in this ordering, because the Keeper has even faster. Um, immediate effect than the taunt minion yeah. board next turn, right? Oh my god, he wins, like, if he gets Wind Fury on one of those minions, he just wins. Like, he can even get Wind Fury on uh, on the Peddler, and then he just attacks. Oh my god. Kios, right? And is there a Wind Fury? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> but still, that was so crazy. <laughs> well, do you clear? Hmm. You, you will kill the the taunt minion that's for sure but do you clear the other minion i i kind of like just it just deal the damage because i think if you clear right now and your opponent finds a big game hunter then you will lose the game why you are zoo at 20 health versus druid and druid might just finish you off with one minion that's the problem which one you have uh, you, you, implosion. You, you don't see the the card in this hand. Yeah, you but don't if, know there what is, he has. if there is a big game hunter just that, that hit your, uh, hits your board, mm -hmm. you will have to play Ancient of War. That would be the worst case scenario for you, a 510. And you still have um, a free 2 minion on board and implosion, and you can tap. So I think clearing is absolutely correct here. Not to mention that big game hunter might not be there, and you just win without it. I will see him. So we can actually clear off the AA now with Force of Nature and Keeper the Grove. I'm pretty confident that's what he's going to do. It's the only thing that's going to really keep him alive. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, to follow up, now he's just going to rely on the zoo, um, just not tapping into anything, too, you know, too heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2 4 challenges, the 3 2 on the board, and Ancient of Law next turn into going to be a tough one versus Cardro versus uh, Heal. But um, you're probably not expecting Doom Guards in this deck. So maybe you feel a bit more safe with uh, with card draw. To, uh, I don't know what he's got left, actually. Does he even have a swipe left? Uh, I think he... He's, he's used one, one, definitely, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's actually a good draw. Because you have yep. another chance to get the swipes. Yeah, exactly. Right. And swipe will actually be able to stop this board. Yeah, let's go for it. You don't have anything else. Just draw the cards. See what the luck will Lady Luck will bring you. Yeah, I think the heal just... I mean, he's not dead on board now. Uh, just about. But the, the heal just delays the game one turn he's probably going to be in the situation again next turn so it just really just stalls it out as opposed to doing anything proactive and to it, move forward you're right and it diminished the values uh, the value of innervate yeah and innervate's just a, becomes a dead card probably yes, exactly yeah. so you want to get the value of innervate because like this is the perfect turn to use the innervate a part of of course of turn one yeah. and two yeah also you're not dead on board like uh if you two if off with hero power exactly so uh Go yeah, for abso it. Absolutely, that's that's what he has to do. He's no, tricky. Don't, don't I, I think I think my worry no. is like if he heals, like what draw, what what singular top deck could he get? Wild growth is absolutely terrible. Uh, shade is kind of rough. Well, play shade anyway. So yeah, use that in a bit. Let's see. Now guards is two needs. damage is needed. Two more damage. So no doom guards in this deck. What else is there? Um, any buffs? Abusive. Uh, Defender still Vargas. Still PO left, right? One more One PO, PO should be yes. there. Yeah. This is why I didn't like the trading, you know, with the loader. Uh, it's eight damage to the face. Why not just deal the damage? Oh, oh, there's, oh the damage. there's two damage. All right, so Gara is able to survive with a very good matchup that he somehow held for the last uh, last game. Yeah, that's true because the double C giants are just like such a menace for for, for the druid player, right? How do you deal with that? That would be game hunter. <laughs> yeah, well, that if if Gara would land his deck to free kit, then maybe that would be a good choice. But otherwise, like uh, I guess I can't really deal with this eight eight unless I will have two swipes. We we don't know if they have play tested together. Maybe they actually have similar decks. And Freaky just had Big Game Hunter, Kofuzad, and Savage Combatants as last three cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that 
That's I think Boston. The thing with the Giants as well is because a lot of the time, uh, unless you're really behind, then you're in problems anyway. You can get them off so cheap that you can do other things that turn as well. Um, you know, because Zoo's just good at filling out his curve with the constant tapping and uh, all the local minions anyway. So mm-hmm. I think uh, I, I really like this deck. I've not played it too much, but um, I, I think it could go pretty far. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's uh, th- really interesting to watch it. And that one turn when he played Enhanced Meccano, just one win Fury even on the Peddler. We'll just win the game. But there are four keywords, right, that you can spawn. Taunt, Taunt Divine Shield, Divine Wind, Fury. Shield Wind Fury, and... That's it, is it? That's so it. Three, three, right? Yeah, because it won't, it won't be charge. Charge isn't isn't a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yes. Okay, so that was a, quite a lot of chances, actually, to get that. Bang! Oh. Double oh. Divine Shield, you're a paladin now. <laughs> All right, so there is uh, one other interesting matchup that we'll probably see and we can discuss. How do you guys feel... Uh, about Rogue versus Zoo. L- Lothar first. It's kind of the same situation as in Druid. Do you, do you have Keeper Innervate, which in this case it's Backstab Agent. It, it yep. feels very similar, right? It's a um, huge amount of damage that can help you with the board. The problem is you don't have the silence that is needed against the eggs. But, but if you can trigger the egg on your own terms and then clear it out with a single eviscerate, the Backstab Agent, or you have the sap to get the tempo advantage on a mm, on a creature like um, Pile the Shredder or the egg itself, it's still fine. Uh, but what you need also is to take, take into consideration that the implosion will be a huge factor if you don't have a fan of knife. So it's like a back and forth because Rogue has to get the answers. He, he either relies on his own minions with, prep on, with preparation on, on the back, right? An example, yeah. Violet Teacher. Or they are relying on the uh, possibilities of board clear. So backstabs, agents, fennel knives, deadly poison, blade fluid. So 50-50. I would say it's, it depends on on both skills o- of the players because unless you, know, you play rogue and then it's definitely 60-40 to the if rogue. If you pl- if you're playing <laughs> a rogue, you know, True. almost every single time that you'll be saying yeah, it's a p- at least 60, 40 at least. So yeah. All right, so Raven, this is actually a warlock versus a warlock. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one because one one of the key cards in this matchup, uh, well, the key cards are the Sea Giants. They're uh, huge because it's just so much easier to get them off because because uh, there's normally so many minions on the board, but also Implosion, and they both have Implosion. So I think it's they're really close now. Because on one hand you have Implosion, friend of Argus, and then the board with the Egg. Whereas on the other side, there's Imgang Boss and Die Wolf, which are also really powerful as well. So re- really, really close, actually. I'm struggling to call who's actually really ahead here. The, the problem, I think at the moment, um, Freaky is ahead with uh, Im- the Flame Imp uh, because uh, he was able to deal uh, dam- some good damage. And then Gara this turn doesn't really have a great play unless he goes for Coin well, Implosion right implosion now. Implosion is awesome. Implosion kills the Flame Imp. And you have multiple minions that, that that can benefit from the Direwolf Alpha next turn and the PO. It's an awesome turn, I think. Yeah, I like uh, the coin implosion here because you don't really care about the Voidwalker, right? It just doesn't really matter at the moment. And plus, Gyra's actually got card advantage as well. So he doesn't need to tap too heavily and can fill out his curve a bit more. Whereas looking at, at Freaky's hand, then yeah, he has implosion next turn, but then he's got to sort of either draw into something better or run with the Argus, but then he's always going to be tapping to try and catch up. Well, he has the Defender of Argus, ex- exactly, so he might be doing more tempo. But on the other hand, oh, oh. he's risking it. Okay. To be honest, I don't know if I like that. Because only... Like, if you would hit two, you're in a big pile of trouble, I think, because you, you're not triggering your Hunted Creeper, right? And... Yeah, well, maybe and, okay. and, and the thing is as well, like if the Argus comes down on the Voidwalker, it's got four health, but as you said, you've got Die Wolf. Yeah. And next turn to sort of power through that. And the PO. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I guess it's fine. I don't think it's like completely, it's going to cause the, the loss of the game or no, anything. No, of course. Yeah. But, um, but I think it's definitely an interesting point. And now the Argus comes down on the egg, which is really nice, as there's no silence available to Gara. Um, and now this in gang boss is probably just going to push. Is there like any reason to, to trade here? The to only pass reason up floor to trade damage? is to play around Die Wolf Alpha. That's, yeah, that's what true. happened. Uh, you called it. Like well, that. overall, overall in this matchup, uh, in the early stages, it's all about board control. Like the player who who takes over the board control just wins. 
there is no way to come back because suddenly he will just trade into minions and attack face f for like one or two. And yeah, because he has no board clay, right? Yeah, so th there's exactly. no way to, to claw it back. So whoever gets the board control just, just wins. That's why the early damage to face doesn't matter much. Hmm. This is a tough turn. It's not easy, that's for sure. I would say that you probably will use one minion to, to clear the flamen, then Die Wolf Alpha kills the egg, other minion gets the PO and, and kills, kills the, the spider. spider. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not great, but it's probably the best answer because that egg needs to be dealt with. The problem is you're not doing anything against the defender of Argos that clears the Die Wolf Alpha back, and you are in a position that's really hard to answer. To Maybe I will just favor the Defender of Argus here and not pop the egg. Just, yeah, exactly. Just pass. pass the turn. But now this opens. Um, well, implosion. that's a huge swing. If yeah, you want to go for it. I, I like implosions too. Like, just kill one of the 2 2s, uh, slam implosion on the 2 2, and uh, go for face with the egg. You still have an egg that needs to get popped. So there is only one minion on board. I think the, the good thing um, about the Argus is that you can clear the two minions, leave, uh, say, the, the other defender of Argus, um, but then there's only one minion on the board, so it can't proc the egg and kill the 4-4 mm -hmm. on the same turn. Or, 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 you know, unless there's a Doom Guard or whatever, which, which is fine. But, you know, like, it, it creates such an awkward situation. Same with Implosion. Yeah. I mean, both plays are probably equally good. That's why I also uh, Freaky was thinking about it. I like this more than the implosion because the egg is a threat itself right now yeah. because it has two attack. So you can't really ignore it any anymore, right? Because it trades for whatever you play on the board unless it's in the gang boss and in Sea Giant. In yeah, actually guard. talking about Sea Giant, this maybe this play is better against the Sea Giant because with implosion if you hit for four, it's possible that the Sea Giant is actually being played. And you have no answer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Um, this is definitely a tough turn. Yeah, still tough for Gara. So I mean, he could just play him gang boss and then trade, it, but that doesn't really accomplish too much. Now he has the egg. He might favor to put that down, but again, if he trades with the two three, then yeah, he has PO for the egg, but he can't proc the other egg, you know, without it. So he doesn't have a, an implosion or anything for next turn. So I like the gang boss. You need to just start getting tokens on the board that you can actually mm -hmm. do something with next turn. Ooh, and another withdraw. Nice Yep, abusive surgeon, pop the egg, kill the one one, yep. drop the loader. And that will probably be be it. Because how do you even come back from that? Uh, Especially with the stuff. cards in hand, there's nothing that I mean the enhanced mechano does almost nothing at this point because mm -hmm. it's four mana and you've got zero minions. Uh Doctor Boom's definitely gonna be good next turn. Or, or at, at least have a chance to claw back, but it, it might yeah, it might just be one turn too late. If you could play it this turn then Maybe, especially with Enhanced Mechano, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. maybe, but I think this is just too late and just going to be too much damage for Gara to deal with. Especially with Implosion. Gara is playing two Defender Vargas, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, but this is the problem. This is what we talked about like in the beginning. What I what I think of the C Giant and Enhanced Mechano, though, because it, it gets just clunky. It doesn't rely on efficient minions so much as it was before. So... You, you you will find yourself in a situation when, okay, there's a Die Wolf Alpha, cool, it's a 2-2-2, two, 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 but it relies on board control, and you don't have it right now. Then it's the Encanto Mechano, which is awful in this situation, because it doesn't do anything. Nurbanek and Taunt yeah, Nurbanek. That, that's the only thing, but it can get Divine Shoot, <laughs> and you're like, okay, <laughs> that's a cool Th thing. This just got awkward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, this egg I kind of want to one proc being really durable. Th that Nurbanek just doesn't want to get <laughs> out, so what do I do? So this doesn't look good for it uh, doesn't look good for Gara at all. I really like this play as well. Um, so you just want to clear, like at this point, look look at your your board. Like you just definitely just want to clear. Yeah. Um, maybe you leave the the gang boss up. He could clear it off if he wants to. There's no uh, need actually. Well, I think you just live, you, gi you the give place. them you give them nothing on the board, right? I think that that's the way they're going here. Like you just give them absolutely nothing, and then there's no chance of weird POs, abusives, or you know o other buffs coming down. That, that's a that, that's yeah, a good Gormok. point. But the five damage to the face is so tempting. It's, you put your opponent at 17, and you have left uh, 12, 14, 14, 15 damage right on board. Yeah. I don't so know if you need creeper here though. I probably would have tapped. Uh, sorry, 14. Well, creeper is not a minion that can trade. 
And... Oh. Well, so you just trade your minions into Dr. Boom and play your own Dr. Boom. Seems like an okay play. You attack with both up to face first, though. Oh, that's no, you don't kill the bombs. I think you just deal the damage to the face. Seven damage to the yeah, face, the, the two it. bombs aren't going to... The board looks a lot different now, I think, where you can afford not to kill the bombs. Um, because they're just... What are they actually going to do now? Um, because you, you're on so much health and have so much board. You I know, think you, it's just you've consistent. Got seven, seven. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to stick to the plan of I will clear the board yeah. every single turn, and look then at there's, there's no way you can lose. If there will be, like, if there will be possible double wind fury on those minions, w would that be enough? 12, 20. Yeah, if, if, the, if he leaves the bombs, actually double PO on the bombs, Darwolf Alpha and Enhance the Meccano, if it hits double wind fury on the bombs, is lethal. I kind of wish he left them up now, just so we could have seen <laughs> what happened, because that would have been bring, a crazy. I would bring my sex music from from my phone, you know, to my <laughs> phone back if that would happen. That would be so cool <laughs> to see, right? That's why being consistent and clearing the board always makes those peels dead. And Hansa mechanic uh, Mechano dead, Daru Volfa dead, yeah. Gara dead. Yeah, and there's literally, I mean, I just don't think there's a draw left. Um, Dark Peddler into what is it? The tournament attendant. That's, tournament that's attendee? A, that's a no. taunt, right? Tournament winner. Yeah, uh, tournament attendee. Oh, attendee. That was close. Come on. Three POs. Just triple PO this guy. <laughs> he, he, right, uh, Where's the R2D2? <laughs> three PO. Yeah. Now I exactly. just want to see the that was a good all, one. Like all it. three POs onto the Dr. Boom. Look, it has win theory. If he survives, one more turn. 12 plus three 15. is 15. He's actually not dead yet. He can you Dark Peddler. First Dark Peddler, yeah. right? Dark Peddler is so good. There's a reason amazing it's in like every card. Warlock deck. Yeah. <laughs> amazing card and so well designed. But <laughs> whoops, Seeker, whoops. go! <laughs> yeah, well, it's a one round of five five, right? Not bad. Oh, no. wait, that that's sixteen. That's right? enough. No, oh, that should wait. be enough. I think you'll still have. All right. Yeah, yeah that's enough. So um, Gara had this chance to twenty four damage if tw like that was even. <laughs> 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 if there was Dire of Alpha surviving, right? What will happen? That would be plus twelve. 14, 28. Out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Vroom. Right, but uh, uh, that wasn't the case. We'll be having Freaky, Freaky here for an interview. the coach. But for Gara, this is not the end of the tournament. He has two wins and two losses. So if he wins another one match, the one last round of you the have Swiss a chance. Remaining, he, I guess he has almost a certain that he will attend day two, so... All the free tools go through. Um, yeah, Freaky, if you can actually go here. We have Freaky with us. Do you have a microphone? Uh, he doesn't have a mic, but Mike is coming. Mike is coming to Freaky. Uh, I have no idea if, that if his name is Mike. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I, I nice. Guess it is not. <laughs> so, Freaky, first, congratulations. And if you can uh, actually talk uh, to yeah. the mic. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, yeah, that was really well played. And, I uh, mean... It feels good and feels, feels really bad, bad at the same time because it's against Gara and uh, we are good friends, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you also played uh, Double BGH, Kelfuzad and uh, Savage Combatant in your Druid deck? No, I haven't. <laughs> 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 have, you, have you actually uh, noticed that he had Kelfuzad? Did no, you? I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. That was a surprise card. He wanted to surprise you with, with uh, it specifically. And oh. to become Hunters. Yeah, but that we've seen, right? Yeah. Were you? Yeah, yeah, I know that. And um, all right, so wha what do you think Gara did not queue his zoo against uh, your druid? Um, I, don't I don't know, know actually why he didn't do it. it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, surprised actually. actually. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we were too. We were like, same. so yeah. if it's zoo, he's just going to queue it, like, you know, favored matchup, yeah, then yeah, go yeah. from there. But he that took the druid mirror. That's, that's what, what I thought as well. well. So, so yeah, yeah, I'm a bit surprised. So you may maybe he wanted to surprise you that he has the zoo, so you would mulligan. Oh wait, different. Really yeah. Last match. Yeah, yeah probably. probably. <laughs> so out, out of interest, how come you chose the uh, the zoom mirror for the last game as opposed to your rogue? Um, yeah. I, thought I thought it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what I choose because, because uh, if, if I, I lose, I'm still gonna play both decks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I just wanted, wanted to not show the rogue exactly uh, how it's built. Yeah. yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sneaky beaky like. That makes <laughs> makes a lot of sense, and um, you're probably through with the three wins at the moment, right? Uh, I need one more win. One more win to like to be super so wait, sure. What's what's I'm the score? I'm two two at the moment. Oh, you're oh, two two. Yeah, yeah. So Garo was lined down. Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh, okay, that's right. quite was, uh, unfortunate. An initial match. For you? No, For you? Not, uh, yeah. yeah. If I lose, I'm out, and if, if he loses, he's out. So yeah. 
Wait, what? Yeah, so Gara's out now. I think Gara's Gara Gara out. Was it, wasn't Gara 2 1? Was he 1 2 as well? He was 1 2. Oh, man, okay. Okay, so, wow. Actually, we have to redo the whole match, you know, because he casted <laughs> it the wrong way. <laughs> well, now I feel stupid. That's fine, though. Uh, freaky. No one will remember. One more match, and you're through. I will I do, do it. it. You'll do it? Yeah. You're ready? So. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I have two for Gara. Gara. Okay. okay. You're, you're carrying the weight of Gara's yeah, hopes and dreams. Yeah. So that, that's actually pretty heavy, you know? You're carrying a Kofu Zad and WGH on your back. Yeah. yeah. And Garo itself. He's yeah, a big yeah. boy. Yeah, Garo's a tall guy. <laughs> and see Giants. <laughs> Dude. But I will make, make it. it. Yeah. I th yeah. Okay. I so. All right. So I think uh, that was the last match, by the way, the last match of the uh, round four, which means we will be ready right away into uh, with the round five. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Freaky, for joining us on the couch. And uh, I guess we can sh quickly go to the break and prepare the next match, start round five, and get on with more Hearthstone. So stay tuned for more Hearthstone after the break.